Well, good morning, folks. It's time to ride Watopia's new roads. The Wednesday morning, October 25th. And Zwift officially rolls out the new roads in two hours at 6.01 a.m. my time right now. <laughs> Uh, so let's find, let's figure out the road. So I've got these uh, sorted by route completion, which means I'm seeing all the new routes I haven't ridden yet. You can see there's some longish ones, 40 plus kilometers. This one's almost 40k. So there's there's four routes that are 40k or bigger, basically. Uh, I'm gonna do the one called Coast Crusher. So this one starts in the jungle. Takes you around to the new coastline. And then you turn around at the uh, the LAX roundabout in Fuego Flats. And you come back on the same new coastline road. And it ends at the last sprint right there. 42K. It includes a long lead in from the jungle. Let's get going. <laughs> well, the objects haven't loaded yet. Watch how they fill in on the screen. Here we go. <laughs> wow, well, there's trees. And virtual shifting is messing up. What in the world? in my hardest gear. Oh. Okay. Huh. Now it's working. That was weird. Never had that happen before. And my right play controller was vibrating strangely, kind of pulsing as it was stuck on the floor gear. See if there's anybody else riding over there yet. <laughs> the only people who should have access to the new roads, the small group of Zulfers, who get early access. They're mostly ride leaders, long time Zulfers. They get to do kind of some early testing. I got uh, even earlier access to these roads. I got on them last week. So I could make Strava segments for them. Because as you may or may not know, I handle all the Strava library of segments for Swift. It's a long 
strange story as to why that is. <laughs> I got on Zwift in 2015. I was super into Strava. And I noticed there were a lot of Strava segments on Zwift. But a lot of them were very inaccurate. They were, didn't line up to the proper finish lines sort of thing. So I started making my own accurate segments and labeling them Swift Blog Verified. My site was called Zwift Blog at the time. And they became kind of the, you know, the official segments, official, unofficial community segments, just because people knew they could be trusted. Fast forward a couple of years, and there's more and more segments being created. And many of them are not accurate. And there are tens of thousands of people riding on the same little Pacific Island. <laughs> and you could tell the way Strava had set up the algorithms for finding which shape segments show up automatically in your ride report and which ones are hidden that that algorithm was not working <laughs> it would show it would show these dumb segments that weren't accurate at all wouldn't show accurate ones that a lot of people had starred it was goofy the way the whole thing worked Eventually, Strava marked a bunch of segments as private segments. A bunch of the user-created Swift segments. They made them private, so only the users who created them would see them. And then, several months after that, they made a second pass and a much more uh, much more impactful pass because they marked every single segment every Zwift segment <coughs> ever as private except for the ones I created under my my Zwift Insider account so I have a separate Strava account from my personal called Zwift Insider. And those are the only segments that are that are public for Zwifters. It's been that way for a couple of years. Maybe a few years now. Time flies. This arch right here, interestingly enough, is the start line for two of the new routes, this arch. That's a first. They use that arch as a finish line. I think ZRL did in a race a couple rounds ago. But yeah, that's a that's the start line after the lead in from the jungle pins. Well, two of the routes. Still on the lead in here, in case you notice.
one of the interesting things about this expansion is it's not easy to get to it. <laughs> kind of remote. Virtually remote. Turn my fan on. A little bit of air moving in here. get to these new roads, either have to ride through the jungle, like I'm doing right now, or you have to go get to start in Fuego Flats in the desert and ride all the way across the desert and then turn in Saddle Springs at the roundabout there. And you have to be level 10 plus to get in. That was a surprise. I thought Zwift was moving away from oh, those level requirements, but yeah, gotta be level 10 plus. Unless it's an event. If it's an event, anybody can ride in it. You can also join a friend if you got a, a buddy riding the new roads and you're not level 10 yet. You can join him. Okay, here's our turn off. So this is the new road, start of the new road. We're not be, we're still officially in the lead in, as you can see up on top. I haven't done the lead in portion yet. This is a cool little section, this, uh, this joining road between the, uh, the Mayan village, it's called Sandy Coast, this first little settlement we get to, this road joining, it's cool, misty and mysterious, with these big overhanging rocks. should change camera angles, give you a better view. Yeah, that's a good view. This new section of the road is quite flat. I mean, it undulates, but never anything, never what you would call a substantial climb. Little bumps. I think I noticed one spot that went up to three or four percent for about five seconds. <laughs> it's really just a Black cruising road. This is kind of the ruins section of the Sandy Coast area. You can see the stones are kind of kind of aged and broken. Then we'll get to the spot where everything looks looks newer. which is a little confusing. How can something be Mayan, but also look new? But that's the magic of Swift, right? All right, here's the first sprint. It's called the Stoneway Sprint. Here's the start line.
Three for six. Starts slightly uphill, then levels out. Ah, Leah Thorvalson has a sprint time here. She's currently ready. She's a, wonder if she's close enough to see a message. Find out. We might be way too far away. This is a long road. It's almost 20k. The section of New Road is 19, 19 kilometers long. <clears throat> so there's four sprint segments on this new road. Kind of, kind of two pairs of them. You can see in the mini map at the top right. There's two sprints that come pretty quickly and then kind of a big gap and then two more sprints. The sprints in order from this direction, the sprints are called stone wave sprint, the one I just did, Acropolis sprint, Basquatch sprint, and wood woodside woodland oh it's woodland <laughs> let me look look at my notes yeah woodland woodland sprint <clears throat> wish there was a way to disable the action bar for rides like this or I want to do a, a drone camera and move it around, but that activates the action bar. This is pretty amazing, right? Check out the scenery. Again, this is called Sandy Coast Settlement. Kind of a weird name for a Mayan settlement. I feel like it needs a more Mayan name, but that's what Swift called them. see some cool birds there's that bird that just flew over on the left looks like a quetzal south american bird state bird of brazil maybe oh there's a toucan i love birds <laughs> there's an eagle uh, on the other end of this road he's fun let's we'll see what see what kind of wildlife we can spot I like these fire cauldrons. Pretty cool. But my favorite of the new animals is the lizards. I'm sure to pull those out too. I was talking to Shane Miller last night. He's, he's a fan of the lizards too. <laughs> Their animation's pretty cool. So those four, the four sprints, Stone Way, Acropolis, Basquatch, and Woodland, they all have, they come from both directions. So we've actually got eight sprint sections if you're going both ways. Here comes the Acropolis sprint. Think the camera angle so you can see it. See if I can beat Leo this time. <laughs> Got tired legs yesterday. That's my first excuse.
Keep the old heart awake. There's the lizards. Just past him. Friendly seagull. Still technically in the Sandy Coast area here. It's pretty big and they're rambling. But there's more lizards. I like all the wildlife. Up to the top left up there. Like, almost looks like a road. Hi, lizards. Let's say hello to these guys here. Who can I hit my brakes? <laughs> hey, buddy. This guy needs a name for sure. <laughs> All right, see you later. When you go through the tunnel, you know you're entering the next section. It's called Ciudad La Cumbre. Ciudad La Cumbre. La Cumbre is like a summit, you know, the top of a mountain. The city of the top of a mountain. It's not that it's at the top of the mountain, but the idea is that it's positioned at the base of the Epic Kingdom, hence the name. This one's got a Spanish feel to it. Reminds me of some of the coastal Coastal towns in Mexico. Oh, look at that, a soccer field. I haven't noticed that. Or a football field, more accurately. <laughs> nice.
What other camera angles could we use? Kind of fun. You got kind of the mission style architecture here. Uh, a couple of those up to HQ people just popped out. They can see my messages. Swift calls their employees Watopians. A little bit confusing. And Swifters may feel like they're Watopians, but makes sense. They're pretty far behind me, which means they probably don't see the message. Swift only broadcasts your messages to a certain number of kilometers away. Kind of a cool little section here with the umbrellas. Cliff should make it so that if you can see your rider in the rider list, then they can see your messages. For times like this. But those are also really rare times. You have to have very few riders on the course for that to matter. Last little section in Ciudad La Cumbre. We will go through the tunnel to exit. Little past a third of the way down with our route. It's cool, a tunnel with a view. All right, entering the next section of this coastal road. Check the sign up. Basquatch. Basquatch crossing. <laughs> I hope they built the Basquatch. And then he's wandering around. Here's another sprint. This is the Sasquatch sprint. This one takes you up past this restaurant on the left called the Puffed, no, the Pumped Pancake. Pumped Pancake. Leah beat me again. <laughs> got this building on the left. Aries Exploratorium. And then the, it says, Believe the Legend on the other building. 
We kind of got the Sasquatch theme. Tourist attraction going on there. Got some deer on the right. I don't know about you, but when I ride my bike outdoors, I'm always looking around at wildlife. It's one of my favorite, favorite pastimes as I pedal. Where I live here in Northern California, in a small town, area, there's a lot of wildlife. Deer and foxes and squirrels and birds, raccoons, goats. Wild pigs I've seen while right here. I believe it's just a small one. Well, this is the little pitchy part I was talking about. Hit 4%. The river under the bridge, it's cool. Looks like that bridge is going to wash out if there's much rain now. Still in the Evergreen Coast section. It's a long section. Until you're in it, because you'll be surrounded by evergreens the whole time. <laughs> Not redwoods. Not like Titan's Glow, but it's redwoods. These are smaller evergreens. There's even a section coming up where all the trees have been cut down, either cut down or burned down. It's a little bit depressing. <laughs> Let's see. The apocalyptic section of this expansion. The dystopian, evergreen dystopia. The train up there, look at that. You can hear it. I probably should have put game sound in the mix, but you can hear the train's whistle. Steam train. I wonder if that's the same train from Lego Flats. It's all connected. That would be kind of cool. Canoe. Tourist signs. Lighthouse on the right there. This has kind of the feel of a dangerous rocky coast. We've got the rock 
outcroppings into the ocean. Got kind of a, an inlet over here on the left with more water. And further up here, we yeah, a shipwreck. There's more evidence that this is a dangerous coastline. Sailors beware. <clears throat> little, little islands. But we want to avoid those with your boat. Nighttime. Experts coming up soon. Little waterfalls on the left. It's a cool looking. Last of the four sprints, the woodland sprint. The downhill sprint. So I have the advantage over the uh, There's all these burned out trees. Halfway point, 21.2. Little bit of a climb out of that dystopian area. Shipwreck is coming up. <clears throat> there you can see it. To my right. A little bit closer. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. <laughs> A 
All right, we're almost to the next section. Last section. Got a little climb here. Actually, I think this section is still technically the Evergreen Coast. Hard to say, it kind of overlaps. Last section is called Googie Springs. Googie style of architecture that you see in Saddle Springs, actually. This one has the geodesic domes. There's also a campground right here. Look at that campground on the left with the gravel road looping up. Misty Pines Campground. Seems like a good spot for a gravel climb expansion. As the road opens up here, this is kind of Googie Springs proper. The Maritime Fishing Village calls it. Do this, you know, you're almost at the end. Mr. Cranky's Crab Shack on the left. You can see the Epic KOM Bridge on the left too. You can orient yourself. It's really cool how expansions kind of change your perspective of Motopia. Like, look at that, that's the radio tower fire off there in the distance, way up there. You can see the, the bridge first, and then the radio tower. Pretty cool. This caught a glimpse of the, what do we call that? Got a label on the map. Yeah, Sequoia Circle. A big redwood tree in the middle of Ocean Boulevard, underwater. We just saw that. That part poking up. Light climb here to get out of the coastal road. See the desert rocks that we join in. We'll meet at this cool lit exit corridor. in California looking. Change the look of this roundabout? Does it always have all the windows? Huh. 
So with today's update, Swift has also refreshed all of Watopia with fresh textures and objects. So for example, got this cactus right here. I don't think it needs to be there. I wonder what other Swifters have seen if they haven't updated when they watch me make this turn here. My guess is they just see me veer off the road and ride into nothingness. Isn't it funny? Because none of them see this new road. They don't have the update yet. Update releases in 70 minutes. We all go according to plan. All right, now we're going back the way we came. And right all the way back through, all the way to the first sprint point, which is the Stoneway Sprint. And this route ends at that arch. The Coast Crusher route. Once again, here we are in Googie Springs. Googie, G-O-O-G-I-E. A little beach fire pit on the right. Little canoes if you want to go hit the water. Be a nice flat race route. About an hour long race. The sprint at the end, which will surely be a bunch sprint, is the route so flat. See, I'm wearing a Swift Insider kit. Matches my avatar to me. Though I do have a headband instead of a hat. Fix that. What happened to my orange head there? Okay, no need to do this. Four percent. He said we were kind of the day.
back on the mysterious evergreen coast, passing the shipwreck. Oh, nothing else to talk about for a little bit. How about I run through the eight routes, the eight new routes. So we'll do them alphabetically. First route called Accelerate to Elevate. 41.3 kilometers, 1152 meters. This one was by far the climbiest of the new routes, but it's very, very flat until the end. So you start in uh, Fuego Platz and make your way over to this new road, right across this road across to the jungle, which is what I'm doing right now, riding in this direction. And then hit the jungle for a second, turn off and hit the Alp. Alp is rift. And that's where all the elevation comes in. The route ends at the top of the Alp. So that's accelerate to elevate. Next route, the big ring. The big ring, you can remember what it is because they named it smartly. The big ring is not only a flattish route where you could stay in your big ring, but also it is a big loop, a big ring. It covers the perimeter of Watopia, uh, not counting Alpha Swift. It starts in Waco Flats, I think. <laughs> Comes around, gets on this road, same direction as we're going now. It hits the jungle. It sends back through the fishing village, goes around the volcano, through downtown Watopia, back to Waco Flats. It's a big loop. Big ring is 48.9 kilometers. 268 meters of elevation. It's the longest in terms of distance of any of the new routes. Next one, canopies and coastlines. This one, you start in the, uh, at the, the desert start pens, but there's a lead in which is all the way to the top of Titan's Grove. Reverse. So a long lead in. Route officially starts at Titan's Grove. And this one is just a point to point route. Quite a few of the new routes are just point to point and not loops. <clears throat> Canopies and coastlines starts at Titan's Grove reverse KOM. Takes you through Titan's Grove, and then out this road. And it ends at the same spot we were in today, at the final sprint arch on this road, which is the Stoneway Sprint. And these and coastlines, 22.6 kilometers, 124 meters. Next route is Coast Crusher, which is the route I'm on right now. 34.2 kilometers, 172.4 meters. 
I'm realizing these stickers don't include deleted now. This one's actually, what, 42 kilometers? You might have to update what, uh, <laughs> what my notes say. But anyway, Coast Crusher starts at the, the jungle pins, takes you down through the jungle, around the new coastal road, then you turn around at the LAX roundabout, come back, oh, there's the eagle on the night. We come back on the same road like I'm doing now. And it ends at the last sprint. It's going to sprint. All right, so that's four of the routes. Fifth one, going coastal. Ah. Wait, you're funny. This is another point to point route. It's kind of a, I don't know, like too short for a race route. I don't know. Funny route. It's another point to point. Starts at Fuego Flats. And it ends. <clears throat> you get on this road and it ends at the Sasquatch Sprint, which is the next sprint I'll be hitting here. That's where the route ends. It's a really short route. It's only 16.4 kilometers, 63 meters of climbing. Next one, shorelines and summits. This is the second hardest of the new routes. Also the second longest in terms of the distance. This is a, a big counterclockwise loop. It starts in the jungle, takes you down through on this road up and out through the desert. Then you cut over to the Epic KOM. Then you ride the Epic KOM forward, all the way to the top. And then, you're not done yet. Still have the bonus climb, the radio tower climb. You do. Take the radio tower, you need to send that. You send the Epic backside of the epic KOM and go back to the jungle. That's your loop. Storm lines and summits, 46.2 kilometers, 776 meters. Sugar cookie, next one. This is kind of a pretty cool route actually. Uh, sugar cookie you can think of as kind of a tame, tame down, sweeter version of shoreline from summits that I just talked about. River cookie starts in the same place, jungle, ends, and is also a counterclockwise loop. So you go on this road from the jungle, this road up through the desert, then up towards the epic KOM. But instead of climbing the Epic KOM, you take the Epic KOM bypass road, which lets you ride along the cliffs and not do all the climbing. And that road then takes you back to the jungle. That's a nice little loop. 33.6 kilometers, 250 meters. And the last one, Temple Trek. This is a really short route. Starts in the jungle, and you ride down the coastal road to the second sprint point, which is the Acropolis Sprint. And that's the end of it. 6.5 kilometers, 25 meters of climbing. Super short. Double check. So that's all it routes.
But yeah, my Sobata. I picked up some extra jerseys. <laughs> Comes a Sasquatch Sprint. This is a slightly uphill sprint. Starts on this little downhill, so it'll have a fast entry. Then there's a choke climb. Believe the legend. the pumped pancake. I could go for some pancakes, I think. Seven oh seven oh five AM here. It's still dark outside. I haven't eaten anything yet. <laughs> You might find that Watopia overall just looks more cheery, more vibrant, more green. That's all part of the Watopia refresh. It rolls out today. The texture is just more vibrant. And they've upgraded the art in a lot of places. Great. Even the road surfaces are different. I noticed the the road up the Alp looks like this road, where it used to be more like cracked asphalt. Smoother, better maintained surface, virtual surface. It doesn't roll any differently. <laughs> CRR. Back in Ciudad La Cumbre. Right of it here. One place you'll notice the Watopia refresh. It's in downtown Watopia. A lot of new stuff. A big, a big Watopia sign right by the spawn point. There's a new surf shack. There's a Lighthouse. <laughs> if you lost your umbrella, I know where to find it.
helicopter view. In case you're wondering, yes, I will be updating the Watopia map. Probably announce in a week or two that it is available to buy. Got to get to work on doing it. Exiting Ciudad La Cumbre through the tunnel. One bummer from Strava's side that they're requiring segments to be 500 meters long or longer. And all eight sprints here, well, that's not true. Seven of the eight sprints are too short. There's the lizards, the guardians. Seven of the eight sprints are too short for a Strava segment. I created one of them. I think it's Woodland. Uh, well, I know it's Woodland. I just don't remember which direction. The Woodland forward. Whiff's leaderboard doesn't have forward or reverse in the sprints. So I assigned them myself. <laughs> So I decided that all the that the forward direction would be the direction I'm riding right now. If you're coming from Fuego Flats, that's the forward directions for the sprints. Reverse would be with them from the jungle. What's general rule for the direction of the sprint is forward direction should be the more commonly ridden direction. And my guess is this is going to be more common one coming from Fuego Flex. <sighs> coming into Sandy Coast here. Three kilometers left. To the Stoneway Sprint finish line. This is the Acropolis Sprint. Let's 
counts as a slightly downhill sprint. It starts flat. And good. Tilts downward. Around 2%. That flow through the air, it's cool. <clears throat> A big toucan. <laughs> A mammoth toucan. One kilometer left. Just over seventy five minutes. Nice ride. Third of the last sprint. Slightly uphill, then it flattens out. Get an achievement badge here. I 
this. It gave me 684 XP. So Swift has changed their metric for deciding how many XP you get. Used to be divisible by five. Now it's not. I gotta figure out what that metric is. <laughs> Let's see, 684. See if I can figure it out with the kilometers. About 16 XP, 16.2 XP per kilometer. 684 I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe 16. Seems goofy though. Because I get 20 XP per kilometer. free riding so it should be should be more than 16. interesting that my guy is still coasting is this whole section of road really that downhill <laughs> all right well that's all folks thanks for watching enjoy the new roads i think it's a i think it's a beautiful addition to watopia it's i always like to see new roads on watopia so just about any addition is welcome but yeah, the artwork's beautiful, and it's going to be some fun new routes to race and ride. So, looking forward to it, and I hope you all enjoy them too. See you later. I'm going to keep going here. You ever do the coasting contest outdoors, where you start on a descent, and then you see who can coast the furthest on their bike? That's what I'm doing. It's been a long time since I just coasted like this, I think. Swift is definitely, I mean, it used to be they would auto break you so quickly that you never coasted like this. Look at how far I've gone without pedaling. Now I'm finally really slowing down. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if I won that coasting contest, but I was close. Right on everybody, see you out there. <laughs>